Hello aspirants, I once again welcome you all to Editorial Analysis of Shankar AS Academy. Today is date is 28th of November 2024. Displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. In this news article, we will be seeing about the MG Narega scheme and the recent deletion of certain workers from the particular scheme. And in the second article, we will be discussing about the Election Commission of India, its evolution and certain reforms that has to be taken with respect to this institution. So, without any delay, let us get into the new News article discussion. Now look at this article from the text and context page. This article talks entirely about the MG Narega scheme and it is currently in use because certain members were actually deleted from this particular scheme. That is why this scheme has actually made news. So let us revise about certain important points given in the article from the mains perspective. Before that we have to know about the overview of this particular scheme. See it was enacted in 2005 and certain objectives of the scheme are first to ensure livelihood security, secondly to create sustainable rural assets, thirdly to strengthen grassroots governance and fourthly to promote the social inclusion especially including scheduled caste and the scheduled tribe people. So the mandate is to provide livelihood security, reduce rural distress and to create durable assets. So these three are the very important mandate of this particular scheme and it actually covers all the rural area in India. So if you are asking how this rural uh, livelihood security is provided, so it is provided by 100 days of guaranteed unskilled manual work at a statutory minimum wage. So this wage, wage will be actually uh, based on the CPI agricultural labor. Uh, here CPI is nothing but the consumer price index. So based on the CPI agriculture laborers, uh, this particular wage will be actually fixed. And, and based on this wage, uh, compulsory of 100 days of unskilled work will be provided in the rural in environment. And when we talk about the funding pattern, center will be covering 100 percentage of unskilled labor cost and it will be covering the 75 percentage of the material cost. So the remaining 25 percentage it should be borne by the state government. And when we talk about the implementation, it is done by Ministry of Rural Development in short called as MRD along with the state government. So this is a very basic wave overview of this MG Narega scheme. Now let us quickly go through the features of the scheme. See firstly as I said it provides the right to work. This is as per article 41 from the DPSP, we have right to work, education and public assistance. And secondly, it provides unemployment allowance if the work is not provided within 15 days of the application. So a particular person, he can apply in a website that has been dedicatedly created for this particular scheme. And if the person is not uh, getting the work within 15 days, he will be getting an allowance. So that is what they meant by unemployment allowance. So we can tell that within 15 days he will be guaranteedly getting a unskilled labor work. Thirdly, it ensures the women's participation. If you ask how, a priority has been given to women to at least one third of the beneficiaries. So, if there is a beneficiary, at least one third should be from the women and this is a very important mandate. Fourthly, the work radius is within 5 kilometers and extra wage will be provided if it is greater than 5 kilometer. Apart from this, uh, work site facilities like uh, cliche, then drinking water and first aid facilities are provided to the workers who are working in this particular scheme. So these are all very important key features. So if you actually talk about the constitutional provisions with respect to this particular scheme, uh, we already discussed about Article 41. It provides right to work, education, public assistance. And Article 39A, it actually ensures livelihood means. Article 43, all three are DPSP, okay. So, Article 43, decent standard of living. So, it satisfies all the three DPSP. Apart from this, there are certain fundamental rights when it comes to right to work. It is Article 14, which ensures equality before the law. Then Article 15, prohibition of discrimination, then article 21, right to life with dignity. So we in preamble also we have justice and equality for all as a very basic or core principle. Okay. So MG Narega scheme is actually based on all these provisions that has been given in the constitution. So we were talking about the worker deletion right. It is very arbitrary 
and it actually it affects all these fundamental rights and DPSP principles that has been enshrined in our constitution. So, this is what the article is actually talking about. Now, looking at the implementation mechanism, see it is done by Gram Panchayat at the very grassroots level. They identify the projects that has to be done and they also issue job cards to the employees that has been taken in for the work. And in the middle level, there will be a district program coordinator in short called as DPC. He will be in the district level implementation and above that comes the state employment guarantee council which just gives the policy inputs to both the state and gram panchayat and helps in scheme evaluation. So, this is how the particular scheme is also implemented. Now, let us quickly go through what are all the issues are there when particular people are arbitrarily deleted from this particular scheme. See, the first thing is violation of right to work. See, denial of employment opportunity for 100 working days guaranteed is not fulfilled. And most of the exclusion are due to not willing to work. But the issue here is most of the people who are actually willing to work and especially the women are arbitrarily removed. So, this also violates the mandate of the particular act. Secondly, it increases the economic vulnerability due to the loss of wage income. The deletion actually worsens the financial insecurity among the people in the rural area. And there is an impact on the marginalized group as I said earlier, like women, landless laborers, they are disappropriately affected due to the arbitrary deletion. Thirdly, the social justice is actually undermined. I am saying this because if a particular person has to be removed, it should be done by uh, the authority after having the consultation from the Gram Sabha. But in certain cases, it has been just bypassed which means the safety net provider will be disrupting in the particular case and all these ultimately lead to undermining of the social justice. Secondly, the erosion of accountability and transparency, this is from the ethical perspective. So, just arbitrarily deleting certain people bypasses the due process. So, it ignores the protocols and, worse, and weakens the trust that has been built by the government organizations. And there is also lack of audit, there are systemic inefficiencies and misuse. So, these are all very key issues when it comes to the arbitrary deletion of workers from the MG Narega scheme. So, so far we saw about the basics of this MG Narega scheme, who will be implementing it, what is the objective of it, what is the mandate of it and then we saw about the key features of this particular scheme, then we saw what will who will be implementing the scheme in different levels and finally we saw about the issue that arises when certain people are deleted from the particular scheme. So, with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, look at this article from Indian Express newspaper. This article talks entirely about the election commission of India and the excellent performance of election commission of India for the past 75 years. The article also suggests certain reforms that has to be taken in order to streamline the particular institution. So, from the main perspective, let us understand the important points given in the article one by one. Before that, we shall go through the very basics of uh, BAC or the Election Commission of India. So, it was established on 25th January 1950. So, 1950 is the first time the Election Commission of India or the ESA has actually been established. The first Chief Election Commissioner is Mr. Suhumar Sen and the first general election held between October 1951 to February 1952 where 17.5 crore voters have been participated with a universal suffrage granted to all citizens about 21 years. See this 21 years later turned into 18 years in the 61st Constitutional Amendment Act during 1989. And this particular act actually empowered a lot of youth to participate in the Lok Sabha election and the assembly elections. And again in 1985, the provisions were introduced for offices for preparing electoral rolls and officers considered on deputation to the election commission during their work. So, here deputation is nothing but uh, assigning a particular officer to a particular role in a particular organization for a specific period of time. So, this is what the deputation actually mean and this provision was added in 1985 only. So, when we talk about the members in the election commission of India, see well starting in 1950 under article 324, 
election commission of india was actually a single member body and later in 1989 it became a multi member body by giving two election commissioner as assistant to chief election commissioner c e c so in 1950 50, there was only the chief election commissioner due to the load of work that has been given to him two assistants were provided in 1989 but later in 1990 to 1993 again the body as a single member body where only the chief election commissioner was there but in 1993 again it reconstructed into a three member body with one chief election commissioner and two election commissioners so this is a very important uh, potential preliminary question so you can just make a note of it then initially colored ballot boxes were been used and later it was transformed to ballot papers see this ballot papers has actually increased the accuracy but there were challenges in results and that is when the electronic voting machine or the evm has actually been introduced so evm was provisioned in 1989 it was actually used in experiment purpose in 1998 and in a full scale use it was done in 1999 goa assembly election so it has been developed by bharat electronic limited and electronic corporation of india limited so since then this electronic voting machine has been used when it comes to the elections now talking about the provisions against uh, booth capturing see 1989 provision actually prevents booth capturing and electoral miss practices by providing a lot of imprisonment and fines as punishment talking about the model code of conduct see this was introduced in kerala in 1960 only and it later expanded in 1978 by the election commission of india for those who don't know this model code of conduct is nothing but a particular code given by the election commission of india to do what and to do not during the election campaigning so it just gives a list of what to do and what not to do okay so this will actually ensure the free and fair and transparent election campaigning and election in india which is a very basic structure of any democratic country so it was rigorously enforced during tn sehan's tenure and electoral photo identity card or the epics or the voter id was introduced in 1993 so these were very important uh, revolution or the evolution that has to be make note of when it comes to election commission of india so now let's go through the reforms that has to be made when it comes to election commission of india see the first thing is electoral fund transparency see priorly there were uh, a particular uh, thing called electoral bond this electoral bond has been cancelled very recently by the supreme court and it has been cancelled due to the opaque funding sources for political parties so the anonymous donations has actually been a very big issue when it comes to the electoral bonds and that is why it has been eradicated very recently and following this we should be ensuring the public disclosure of uh, any party finances and we have to limit the campaign expenditure as well now the second important thing that we have to focus on is to strengthening the model code of conduct we have to enforce uh, strict and penalty for any kind of violations then there should be a real time monitoring of mal practices during campaigning and there should be including the social media regulations to curb fake news and even the hate speech hate speeches now the third important reform that we have to do is with respect to the political party registration see we have to address issues with registration of small and regional parties and we have to scrutinize registration processes and implement deregistration de standards so this will give a clear outline of fair elections and we have to also work on the reform when it comes to the anti defection law to prevent the opportunistic politics as well apart from this we have to educate the voters and bring in a lot of awareness with respect to the elections and we have to particularly reach the marginalized communities and tribal population this will encourage the youth voter registration and even participation leading to enriched democracy apart from this we are talking about the provisions for simultaneous elections for which a lot of uh, provisions in our indian constitution must be amended and if this happens the frequency cost and the voter turnout will be higher 
especially the frequency and cost will be reducing and the voter turnout will be improving okay so this requires constitution amendment and we are waiting for this simultaneous election to be happening in the future years and finally we have to include the marginalized groups especially the women scheduled caste scheduled tribe and obc not only in election participation but also to be a candidate in their particular region so this will bring inclusivity apart and also bring a lot of new ideas to the table so so far in this article we saw about the basics of election commission of india then we saw about the evolution of election commission of india we saw about a, a lot of uh, things like members how it got evolved then we saw about the colored ballot boxes then the ballot papers and then we saw about the reforms that required to streamline this particular process so with so here i have a mains practice question for you india's electoral system has undergone several reforms since independence but challenges such as opaque funding criminalization of politics and low voter participation remain discuss so since discuss is given you can write a multiple perspective to it and you can post it in the comment section for us to review your answer now before ending the news article discussion i have an announcement for you it is regarding our october 2024 editorial analysis monthly marathon it has already posted in our youtube and you can click the link in the description and view it so with this we came to the end of the news article discussion if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankarai's academy youtube channel now thank you so much for listening